Hello, I am Dr. Walter Moran, Superintendent of the East Chester Schools. Welcome to our first show of the 2013-2014 school year. East Chester Eagle Productions will bring you news throughout the year. We will highlight student achievement, academic initiatives, the Common Core Standards, and other topics of interest to our community. This show is a presentation about our New York State assessment results. There has been a lot of talk about the new state tests. I am pleased to report that our students fared well despite the increased rigor of the tests. Here is our Director of Curriculum and Instruction, Dr. Ron Hatter, who made this presentation about the test scores to the Board of Education in September. The three through eight assessments in math and ELA, although they're dubbed as three through eight, it's important to acknowledge that our kindergarten, first and second grade teach teachers have a huge role in preparing the students to take the assessments once they reach that three eight continuum. Now the new assessments, as Dr. Moran mentioned, are aligned to the Common Core Learning Standards, which are far more rigorous than the current 2005 New York State standards that we're working from, or that we were working from. The assessments increased in complexity, and we'll actually take a quiz in just a moment. And the scale, so that we were not permitted to compare apples to apples, was also modified. So previously the scale went from 450 to about 850 or somewhere in that vicinity depending on the grade level and the assessment. And now essentially these uh, scale scores range from 100 points to 425 points. So to create an alignment between previous year results and current year results not only are hindered by the differences in the assessments and the alignment to the standards but also the scale scores. So let's take a quiz. And some of the parents at Ann Hutch saw some of these questions, so I ask that you hold back uh, with the answers. And here's the first question. Ms. Smith places 56 books in a bookcase that has seven shelves. She places an equal number of books on each shelf. How many books does Ms. Smith place on each of the seven shelves? So 56 books in all, seven shelves, equally distributed. It's a straightforward division problem. The answer should be eight. Kudos if you got that, correct. <laughs> Alex is making 14 fruit salads for a party. He places nine cherries in each of his fruit salads. What is the total number of cherries Alex uses for his fruit salads? And students must share their work for this question. Essentially what the child is expected to do is some form of multiplication that results uh, in 14 times nine, 126, I believe. Uh, don't hold me to it if, if I'm wrong, but uh, that's, that's essentially the work of the question. Question three. Last weekend, a store sold the following items. Five times as many hockey sticks as pucks. Twice as many pucks as helmets. Based on last weekend's sales, if the store sells 20 hockey sticks, how many helmets does the store need to sell this weekend? I don't even think I'm going to try to explain that to you. <laughs> the, essentially, the answer is two, but uh, I don't think we have the smart board of the resources right now for me to uh, demonstrate the, the methodology to arrive at that answer of two. Uh, question four, part A. A builder planned to build homes. Each house will be built on five-sixths of an acre of land. How much land is needed for seven homes? So it's a multiplication of a fraction and a whole number. And then part B, the builder began with 10 acres of land. After eight homes were built, how much land was left unused? So the child now needs to calculate the amount of land for eight homes, which is going to be an improper fraction, and subtract that from 10. These are all actual fourth grade questions on the math assessment. The first two questions were from the old exam. Questions three and four were from the new exam. So just to give you a flavor of the difference in rigor and the difference in complexity of these questions, I, th I think we needed to see some examples for that. With that said, on the ELA exam, our students did extraordinarily well. Yes, Rob? Were they given the same amount of time to take the, same, take the test? They were given, when we look at it per question, I believe it was a little less when we look at it per question, when you factor in the complexity there. 
Um, our students in general were able to finish the math. The ELA was a, a different story for them. Uh, they, they were a little rushed on the ELA assessment, but that's not unique to the Eastchester School District. That was a sentiment of, uh, across the state. In New York State, now percentage of students achieving proficiency is one of the metrics that is, is widely used to benchmark where a district is in terms of with regard to academic performance. So if we took our three through eight assessments, threw them in a blender, all of our students in ELA, we would find that 31.1% of New York State students achieved proficiency, which is defined as achieving a level three or level four on a four point system. Students in Westchester County, so that's every district in Westchester County, which you do not need me to go through, 41.8% uh, of students achieved proficiency. Again, it's a level three or four. Next we have low need districts, and we often uh, measure ourselves against low need districts. 51.9% of students achieve proficiency. Low need districts are essentially districts that receive the least amount of state aid. They're considered to be wealthier districts. We fall into that category. Many districts in Westchester, not all, fall into that category as, many, as well as many of the districts on Long Island and some of the suburbs of large cities upstate. East Chester School District had over 60% of students achieving proficiency. And as we look, so it's nearly double the state average, 50% more than the Westchester County average, and approximately 20% more than the low need district average. So on the mathematics assessments, once again, New York State at 31%, Westchester County at 40%, low need districts at 50.9% of students achieving proficiency and the East Chester School District had 63.1, and that's taking a look at our, all of our students, both elementary schools, the middle school, and taking them, putting them into the same pot, 63.1% of our students achieve proficiency. But the percentage of students achieving proficiency is just one measure that's used. It's easy to understand, so it's very widely used in the media, but there's another metric that, in my opinion, is probably more telling than the percentage of students passing. So I'll give you an example, once again. Class results on a test. So let's assume that we have a regular 100 point test that, that we were used to taking back before they started scaling these things out of 400 and four and a quarter. Uh, 65 is passing. Let's take a look at what the percentage of our students passing in this class of 11 students would be. 91%. Now, just as somebody who 17 math courses in college, I look at 91% and I say, huh, hey, that's pretty good. We have some work to do, maybe some minor adjustments to do to really inch up, but 91% passing is pretty good. But I don't know if that 91% proficiency tells the full story of this class. If we look at the class average, or what's referred to as the mean scale score, we'll see the class average is a 74.9. That tells a whole different picture for us. That tells me that we really need to look at our results and our student performance through a whole nother lens, a lens of m more, more drastic measures to raise achievement. The issue and the problem, the fundamental flaw with the percentage achieving proficiency is it treats the 45 in the same way that it treats the 95. The scale score does not do that. So from this point forward, I'm going to focus on mean scale scores as opposed to percentage passing. And I showed you percentage passing and we did great. As we look at mean scale scores, New York State, the average grades three through eight fluctuates between 299 and 300. In Westchester County, it fluctuates between 306 to 308. Low need districts, goes up eight to 10 points uh, or 11 points in some instances between 316 and 318. And our district on each grade level outperformed low need districts in New York State. One thing I do want you to take note of and it's something that I'm very proud of. When looking at the data for districts that have 100 or more students in a cohort, the East Chester School District had the highest mean scale score in New York State. Only one district gets to say that, and that's the district that's first, and that was us this year. And it's just, and I'll talk to you about some of the things that, that have happened to, to get there, but it's just a tremendous 
effort by our teachers, our students, our principals in the building, the administrators, the board in supporting everything that we're doing as a district and our community for their support. Uh, fifth grade did great as well. Fifth grade uh, mean scale scores were eighth in New York State. So another grade level where we performed in the top 10 of New York State as a district. This is taking a look at all of our students. Grade six, seven, grade eight. Grade eight was actually outstanding as well. I believe they were uh, 18th in New York State. Uh, 24th, I'm sorry, my apologies. 24th, and there were 397 districts that had over 100 students um, in, in, in a cohort. In math, the story is very similar. New York State had an average, this one's easy, of 300. Westchester County had an average uh, between 306 and 308, depending on the grade level. Low need districts were between 315 and 319, and once again, our district outperformed low need districts on each grade level. And once again, our fourth grade results were outstanding, top five in New York State. The fifth grade math scores were in the top 10 in New York State again. Our seventh grade math scores were in the top 20 in New York State. Our um, eight, the, I can go on and on and I can speak to our scores and I speak to our scores with great pride even though we do have work to do because until we have 100% of our students passing and the highest mean scale score in every subject three through eight math in ELA, we have work to do and I think the entire district acknowledges that. But this doesn't happen by accident. This is not something that we just flip a switch and, and achieve the highest scores or are in that conversation at least. It begins with our Board of Education, our administrators at the building and district level in bringing those initiatives to the district, supporting those initiatives, allocations in the budget to ensure that we have the funding to continue with programs and bring new programs in. It's the parents and community and the support that they bring to us. It's the teachers. That they're the direct link to the children in the classroom. And finally, it's the students. They're the ones who turn teaching into learning. And that is just so powerful, and the learning is so evident in our district by these results. But I do want to caution you. The results are one snapshot in time. And we talk about them, and they're published in the newspapers, and it's something that we certainly give some attention to. But it's not all we do, and it's not what we do as a district. And I think all of the teachers here would acknowledge that. It's just one small component of what we do. So in preparing this, and I've been part of these presentations since 2007 to the board, but this one had a different feel to it. The stakes were a little higher, if imaginable. The results were a little bit more scrutinized, if imaginable. So I went back to my touchstone, and that's our district's mission statement. And that reads, it is the mission of the East Chester Public Schools to provide an environment that fosters mutual respect, promotes the uniqueness of the individual, provides opportunities for student successes, and guides all students intellectually, emotionally, physically, and socially. In order that students may become lifelong learners and contributing members of society, we encourage students to develop ethical values, civic responsibility, self-motivation, global responsibility, processes of learning, facility and social interaction, problem-solving skills, life planning skills, a comprehensive base of knowledge, Upon the strength and effectiveness of this mission, in partnership with parents and community, rests the future of those children whom we serve. I took the liberty of highlighting what I thought the three through eight New York State assessments represented in our mission statement, and this is all I came up with. Maybe, I guess we can argue that this assessment is a, a test uh, of intellect. I, I, I could also argue against that. They do demonstrate processes of learning, problem-solving skills, and a comprehensive base of knowledge, but it's such a small part of what we do as a district. We teach kids to explore. We teach kids to research. We teach them to appreciate the fine and performing arts. We teach them to collaborate. We teach them to create. 
We teach them to appreciate the athletics and practice good sportsmanship. And most importantly, we teach them to have fun while they're learning. Now, there is a lot of work to do. So uh, Dr. Moran and I, and as a district, we're proud of our results. We're proud of our teachers. We're proud of our principals. We're proud of our students, most importantly. But there is work to do. And we've initiated a, what I believe is a comprehensive plan to take our student achievement and raise it even further. And that includes a new K-3 English language arts program, Reading Wonders, which is a 2014 copyright aligned to the, written to the Common Core, I should say. We're in the process of rewriting a fifth grade math program. We have the Star Reading program in grades two through six, which is an online diagnostic reading program that can take what used to be three days of lost instruction for assessment, or upwards of three days for uh, lost instruction, and consolidate that to one 34 minute period. We have a free online SAT, PSAT, and ACT review program available to all high school students, grades 9 through 12. We have formed a partnership with the East Chester Public Library in hopes of getting any child who wants a library card a library card, access to e-books, and access to a broader collection of reading materials. We've increased availability of e-books, or we're, the, we're in the process of increasing availability of e-books in our middle school and high school library here on campus. And we're also making some various adjustments to our curricula to fully reflect the Common Core standards. Now, I gave you just a very brief overview, but to our community and to those in attendance, my contact information is here. If anybody would like to discuss the assessments, our results, our performance in more detail, there's my phone extension, there's my email, my office is right across the way. Uh, you're welcome. It's the great stuff to talk about. So I am, I am always encouraging your participation and, and conversations with you on our student achievement. I am Dr. Moran, Superintendent of the East Chester Schools. Thank you for watching our show. You will also be able to view it on YouTube. Go to the district website for the YouTube link.